Gary Nolan. I'm from Kansas City, and I, I want to start off by saying I'm so glad to meet Jackie Brown and be in a show with her, and so happy to have made uh, Kathleen Thumb's acquaintance during the show, but I'm very grateful to Ken and to Roy G. Biff for having us for the show. Uh, so, uh, like I said, I'll be a lot better off if we can just like have some kind of conversation or something rather than me just going off about what I think I do. And so when I say like what I think I do, that's really sort of the truth because um, I've had people back home say, well, you're at a place that says uh, gallery for emerging art or something like that. And they go, well, you're not really emerging. You're not like an emerging artist, but I sort of feel like if you're not emerging, you're not an artist. So I don't think it really has anything to do with what stage in life we are, if we've just gotten out of school or something, but uh, I think it has to do with sort of, own, it's almost a scientific uh, experience. Uh, that is the experience of the scientist or the experience of the athlete where, you know, they are always pushing themselves to not rest on their laurel, to not rest on the validity of the last experiment or the last performance. And that's sort of what artists do, too, you know. Uh, if they don't continue to emerge, then they are, you know, then they become, to me, they're like an illustrator, you know, where they're a copyist or they're something commercial. And, and, I, and I choose not to do that. So in thinking about that over the over a period of time, it's like I uh, I throw a lot of things on the wall. Uh, not all of it sticks, but maybe and some of it maybe sticks more more than it should. But I do lots of different things, and uh, what I'm more excited about is not what I make, but how I make it, and what I find out when I make it. So the object is not as critical to me as the process. And the, the process relates to, to uh, a poem. Uh, the name of the poem is uh, Painting in Mountain Street by Howard Nemiroff. And well, I'm not going to recite the whole poem to you, there's a line in the poem where the, the poet, the narrator in the poem, incites the painter in the poem to paint this rhythm, not this thing. And so that, to me, was like one of my critical, to me that's one of my critical thoughts is, you know, it's not the object that's important, but it's the pattern, it's the process, it's the, uh, it's the time involved. Um, which gets me around to sort of another interest in in resolving bifurcation that I have in the work. And so when you think about how all of our symmetries, you know, all of us are in part male and female, all of us are uh, in part physical and spiritual, you know, how do we resolve those things? How do we bring all of those differences that we have into balance? And I think that that's what goes on in some of the work. Like, um, you know, I, I aspire to like so-called high art in these things, but I don't want to uh, kind of be trapped in sort of a high art language, sort of a high, high art technique. So, you know, all of these things are made uh, really just out of tape. And so uh, it's a pretty common material, and so, you know what I would call, have to say, it's like a pretty, you know, it's like a non-art material. I'm not even sure if that's like a legitimate classification anymore, like some, calling something a non-art material. But it's, uh, it's, our, it's an artist's ability to transform experience and materials from one thing to another, which is, I mean, that's part of our job. And so that's what, that's what all of the things I make are. It's really about uh, transformation and uh, it's about 
living up to uh, work that I have to I have to give credit to like older women in my family, people who did rag rugs, people who made quilts, people who took materials, uh, reused, recycled, repurposed them, you know, into, into something that is uh, is new again. So I'm taking some of those experiences, you know, and getting them into different situations. Um, Jackie was talking to me earlier about you know, about the fake wood, you know, and the imprints of the real wood on the tape when I lay it, when I lay it on the floor. That, that speaks to that bifurcation thing. You know, it's about, uh, we think we know wood, and it's such a common thing, but we, if, if I can put it into a different circumstance, then it's such a subtle thing, um, you might, all of a sudden, you begin to think about your limitations and your possibilities. I, I feel like it's about well, uh, it's sort of a, a, an elongation of the well. I can do that sort of sentiment, and if I can get people to say to themselves, "Well, I can do that," then I feel like I'm I'm partly successful. Um, the bifurcation thing down and the resolution of like the of the spiritual and the physical had another it in, it enforced itself on me last weekend when I was in the studio and while well, I'm not a religious man and don't consider myself a Christian, you know, I listen to, to black gospel radio in the mornings on Sunday mornings and my wife is a Roman Catholic and so it's like uh, you know, when you listen to the African American gospel, it's more of a physical experience. And that's how that tradition seeks to uh, preach the gospel. You know, the Roman Catholic experience is more of a, an intellectual, uh, philosophical approach yeah. rather than one that, uh, you know, compared to the, to the African American gospel. And all of a sudden they go, well, that's just another manifestation of, you know, how do you approach, you know, a certain topic, you know, how do you approach that balance, that, that uh, bifurcation on, on your way? And so I feel like that has a direct relationship to what I do with the sculpture, for instance. The dock phone uh, is found, it was laid out across the street as was the PVC pipe that's sticking into it. And so, um, it's part of my job to, to solve that bifurcation of the, of the sort of raggedy and, and ugly into the, something that approaches the glittery and beautiful. And I feel like that's what's going on with these foam sculptures over here. And the marbles, because one surface is so dirty and so matte and so uh, so kind of distressed, but you notice that there's the there's the layering of the of the marbles and the light reflective surface on that that uh, attempts that resolution of uh, that that balance that that I'm interested in the. The two newest pieces in the show are these foam pieces, or these these shiny foil pieces, and those are on uh, found plywood. It's it's the metal tape that we find in hardware stores, and uh, it's it's just a, a, an example of one of those things that I've thrown on the wall to see if it sticks. Uh, it's it's a learning process. I feel like this every show I have is kind of an incubator for the next show. You know, I don't really feel like a show is a show. Uh, this show is a practice for my next show. The show I had before this was practice for this show. And so it's, uh, in that sense, I'm never done. 
the uh, the muse is always tapping me on the shoulder saying well you know like what do you have next and so we get to that picture of the muse you know we see picture paintings of the muse in paintings and, and she's always depicted as some kind of uh, a beautiful blonde haired woman you know when in fact I think that that's part of the trap because it's not about beauty and it's it's not about uh, that sort of idea it's about pressure and so I've come to think of the muse as sort of like some bitch and uh, somebody who's always demanding but she has the payback of the beauty you know she, so she's always tapping on the shoulder uh, but she gives you the beauty in the end if you can if you if you can go through that go through that so I'm only say a few more remarks one, one more basic remark and uh, I'd like to see if you all have any comments but there's a painting in the Nelson Museum uh, in Kansas City where I live and it's it's the the legend of oh boy I'm gonna blow the name of the saint it's the legend of uh, let's say it's Saint Francis is not sorry saint but anyway, he is in his grotto, and he has on his shredded clothes and everything. But out of the woods, there's a there's a muse type figure, like an angel, who is approaching him, and he's looking at her with, you know, this sort of amazing gaze, like here's some sort of savior. But sticking out of her gown is like a claw foot. So you know, she's really not what she intends to be. And so I think that that is a metaphor for what art is about and that it's uh, while we make things that approach beauty approach elegance and approach balance you know there's always some kind of price to pay there's always some kind of pressure to like live up to and so i think that that's another one of those elements in the bifurcation that i think that, uh, is there for the balancing so I'd be happy to take any comments or any ideas. Um, what, I, what I really noticed about your artwork, and I'm glad that you touched on this too, is there's a very strong sense of just play. Yeah. And it's very childlike. Yeah. And that goes with just like experimenting, trying out different materials, trying out materials that you just find in the dumpster across yeah. the street. Um, and I think where that, uh, where I think it was most impactful for me was actually installing the work that I was like, we should put everything on the same level, spread it out evenly. Yeah. And you were just kind of like, let's try sticking this piece from one room to the other yeah. and see what it looks like. And let's try um, just like putting these up in the corner. Yeah. And I think that there's there's a playfulness to how we install the work too. Yeah. Um, well, I have to say that I think that that's a bit of a Something like that is challenging for me with the work because it's a continual struggle for me to be open to the accident. I mean, it's such like, in some ways, it's like accidental BS. But I mean, you know, we intellectualize that from school. We read it. Um, we we sort of know it in our head, but we don't know it in our heart. And it's a continuing struggle for me to be open. To the to the play aspect of it, to be open to the accidental, um, because I get so ego driven about them that it's I have to think that it might be done at an earlier stage than when it is done, sure. because I'll work something to death. Anyone else have any questions? How do you balance drawing and sculpture? So I notice a lot of your pieces are have lines and are very gestural. Yeah. And sort of that play aspect. Well, part of it is uh, part of. I'd like to. It, none of it's really planned. Uh, I am aware, you know, I am aware of line. You know, and I am aware of drawing, and I'm, I'm aware of all those things. 
But I feel like if I stay true to my process, then things will happen in a serendipitous way that there'll be some uh, there'll be some restfulness or some peacefulness within itself that I didn't plan. Like for instance, you know, this this texture sort of relates to this. You know, these these cut lines in here that, that were that were found, you know, there's a little arc over here. This sort of relates to that. I can't imagine anybody trying to figure that out ahead of time. I just can't wrap my mind around that. When I put these pieces of tape, you know, on the floor, um, uh, you know, when I put these pieces of tape on the floor, I don't know exactly what sort of pattern is going to come up. So I take the debris along with, with the wood grain. And so I have to, like, I have to trust in that process. I have to trust in that, uh, to go back to the metaphor of the muse, I have to trust in that uh, metaphorical content of the muse bringing beauty along with maybe the hook or maybe the claw out of the dress with maybe something's not going to work. Like when you were saying about transforming like material into something new, I think that was really interesting because I'm kind of toying with that idea to using material that's, I guess, like wouldn't be traditionally considered to be like an art material to be yeah. used, like paint or glass or like what if I use like, I don't know, like, like a, a mattress or like, yeah. like um, just like, just like any material, like transforming, like yeah. take, using it metaphorically, like, yeah. um, I don't know, can you elaborate more on that, I guess? Like, well, every, I think every kind of, every material is going to have some sort of story yeah. with it. Like, you know, for instance, you use manners, you think of living, dying, and then you have sex, you know, babies, you know, whatever else is going on there. Mm -hmm. And so there's, there's that content, and you know, people, uh, if we can make things, that are open enough where people can have some sort of uh, open up a dialogue that they bring to it with their own inventory of experience, then, you know, I sort of, if I feel like uh, it's done, I mean, we all kind of get that feeling where it's, it's done, but I don't want it to be closed off enough where you can't transform it into something else entirely. If, if it's open enough like that, then it's really a, a, an object that is able to translate something that I've done into something that you can find, you know, something. And then that, in effect, is given back to me. Yeah, like, so like just supposing like a different material is good. It's all different, like meanings. It just creates yeah. something entirely new. But I, I think we just can't discount the possibility of any material being uh, of some potential good to us. And you know, I, to extend that out even further, I think that that's where art's a real metaphor for life in general, you know, because it's like uh, you might have a stereotype about me, I might have a stereotype about you, but. You know, when we find out something, you know, it becomes a real giving thing. So it's, to me, that's where life and work kind of, they worry into each other. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Going once, going twice, going three times. I think I'm done, Ken. Thank you very much.